so we talked about uh, the linear regression problem uh, the classification problem which were in the supervised learning let's talk about one of the clustering algorithm which is k-means algorithm which is uh, unsupervised learning uh, we are given a data set of items with certain features and the values of these features uh, like sort of some vector then a task is to categorize these items into groups to achieve this we will use the k-means algorithm which we'll be learning and so let's see how this k-means algorithm follows and how does it uh, do this clustering part so the first uh, thing which we need to do is we need to initialize the k points so the k means algorithm uh, where the k specifies for how many clusters do we want clusters as in we need to specify to our model that how many group of clusters are it should look in the data for so suppose um, we give the k as 3 then in the whole data the algorithm will try to see where are the, the three best clusters to categorize our data to distinguish our data in the three clusters if we give it four then it will try to fit the more data with four clusters so the k refers to that number so first we initialize the k points we just take the random those k points Let's just say our k for our demonstration purposes is 3. So in the first we just take on the whole data set we just take 3 random points and call it centroids. This is done randomly so it can be uh, the, the, these 3 points can uh, be lying in adjacent of each of them or they can be very sparse. So it is randomly just 3 points are chosen are called centroids. Then the next step is we categorize each item to its closest centroid and we update the centroids coordinate with uh, which are the average of the item uh, categorized in the centroid so far so sort of uh, if you can visualize in a we have three random points which are called as centroid as c1 c2 and c3 in the next step we calculate the distance of uh, this point to all of the other uh, data set in the in the uh, our data so sort of like we have c1 c2 c3 these three uh, data data like the centroids then the rest of the red dots uh, they know that these are the three centroids so every red dot will calculate the distance from the c1 from c2 and from c3 and whichever is the minimum for them it will just be connected to that centroid sort of like it will be in that cluster so every point decides which cluster to go on whichever centroid is minimum to that point similarly once we achieve this we know which cluster do we have then inside this cluster uh, we take uh, this, uh, the minima of uh, the uh, mean position of the centroid as a new centroid point this this can be a virtual point this cannot exist on the real uh, they, they cannot they cannot be a real data point in that point but it does not matter in the whole uh, data points which are categorized as one centroid now we take the mean position of that the average of x value and the average of y value now that centroid uh, will lie on that point we repeat this process and go on uh, for few steps till the centroid do not move this movement as you can see in the picture b to c the, the for example the c1 goes a little bit down the c3 goes a little bit up and the c2 remains almost the same this is called the movement of centroids as soon as we reach some uh, position where the centroids do not move we stop our algorithm to doing this task and the clusters which we get are the new clusters which are formed these are the final clusters which we get from the algorithm so this is how the k-mean algorithm works so in example if you can see uh, this is how the first 
we had the centroids and we created the cent, uh, clusters according to the closest point uh, to that centroid. And uh, in the left, if you can see, these clusters can be from, uh, formed randomly, but later on, uh, they will adjust themselves to give us the best result. So let's see how we can implement a k-mean algorithm in the sklearn. We'll uh, open our text editor here as usual let's just delete this part and now we have uh, the training data and now we want to categorize this into three classes so first import the clustering algorithm from sklearn cluster import k means in this let's also import our plotting library matplotlib.pyplot as plt our model will be k means and the number of clusters can be given inside this we want it to be three clusters because we know the final the classes are three so now it will be a bit different because we are using an unsupervised learning the model will not have a train uh, train values it will only take the features so in model dot fit and then predict so it will fit predict on our uh, x train to training data let's just try to print our predictions which were in our training set Let's just try to do this much, run our code. So as you can see, we end up with some uh, values which are 0, 1, 2. Uh, these are the clusters. Finally, the value which we are getting are the value of, of that cluster. Remember that these cluster values can be different from the class values because the algorithm does not know which class to label which number but it somehow knows okay one cluster is different from the other cluster so we cannot get a real um, judgment value to actually see how good our model is working but we can uh, visualize it using our test set where values are less so let's say y test predict is equals to model dot fit predict and then we use this our x test data and inside this uh, we have we'll use the scatter plot because we have a four features in our uh, test set because there were four features in our data and we cannot visualize in four features let's just take two features and plot it in our x y uh, coordinate so within our x test uh, we'll use this i location and say for all rows use the zeroth column as our x and similarly we'll say for y use the second column so c will take in our test uh, our cluster values so c is equals to y test predict which will actually use these uh, integer values of the cluster to color our uh, data set in different colors so we can visualize them last plt dot show let's save this run our code this is what we get this is sort of clustering in two features it is not all the features it's just two features and we can see there are some clusters uh, which you can recognize as this can be sort of one cluster this can be sort of second cluster and this can be a sort of third cluster so this is how we do the clustering or the k-means algorithm in the sklearn
Now let's look into support vector machine or in short SVM. The objective of support vector machine algorithm is to find a hyperplane in an n dimensional space. The n dimension which means the number of features that discreetly classify these data points. To separate the two classes of data points there are many possible hyperplane that could be chosen. So here we are not talking in the xy plane now all the plane depends in the number of features and support vector machine uh, thinks there can exist a one plane in this n dimensional space which can uh, be used as a plane of classification between uh, these features so it's quite hard to visualize in the n dimensional space but uh, you can imagine it as there uh, in a 3d at least so there uh, will be some plane which will be used to actually discriminate or to uh, stand between as a plane to classify the two points. So our objective is to find the plane that has the maximum margin that is the maximum distance between the data points of both the classes. So this might help in a visualization in the 3D if the points are like that in the inside one uh, cube we want some plane which will be at the maximum distance between these two points in all which will little be used to be referred as a point of classification and it is quite easy to use the support vector machine in uh, using sklearn and we'll use this S, uh, this svm in our same iris data set and then we'll see how good the results are so first thing let's just delete this part then from sklearn dot support vector machine import support vector classifier from sklearn dot matrix matrices import our confusion matrix so our mo model is equals to support vector classifier and it takes one feature called kernel we'll just use it as a linear which means we are using a linear line to classify between our points our data points and as it is a super supervised learning algorithm we'll give this our x train and the value of y train as the targets now we'll use predictions uh, with the model dot predict and we'll give the x test set finally let's create our confusion matrix using cm and confusion matrix which the function we imported and then we give this a y test which is the real value and then y predict which the model predicted at last let's print this confusion matrix let's save this run our code I guess uh, it is just a predict not the y predict let's save it and run our code again so as you can see this is a three uh, three cross three uh, confusion matrix which means for every class so the prediction value uh, because there are three classes so there will be three uh, different type of uh, possible values so even after that our accuracy seems to be hundred percent because all of the classes falls into right position so confu uh, our support vector machine works quite good with the iris data and it uh, learns it learns a lot because it uh, goes into end four dimensional features and then try to make a classifier there so this is was our support vector machine and this is how you can implement the support vector machine in uh, the S in a python using sklearn